how do we refer to you here? Like, what is your are right? You... Yes, exactly. Right. That's what that's. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. And you know what? I, I I pray for sometimes. I pray for a good question asker. You know, because it's like, oh, it's him. It's like I don't even know where to start. Just let me know where you're at in the story, and then I can I can meet you there. Uh, I'm, just I'm, ask me a question. <laughs> you I'm know? trying. Uh, so I'm just thinking of like, uh, there's a couple yeah. like really basic stuff that that's kind of hard to nail down here. Like one, like who are you, and it yeah, like it, is that personal? Right. Or is yeah. That, yeah. Like, a and brand? so. It, and so this comes with a, a set of caveats before I like even answer it. Honestly, a, one being of like false idolship and stuff like that, and everyone knows this. And this is a really interesting concept, though. If I say, "Oh, damn, LeBron just did a sick dunk. I want to dunk like that." Well, now, what what does that mean, right? Do I want Evan's body up there dunking that ball, or do I want to have LeBron's body and dunk do that you ball? Have his do, life? Want, do, yeah. do, do do I want in plus? Do I want LeBron's dunking? I I want something equal to or better than, right? Isn't that what I'm asking for? So there's a danger to... to him being the well, LeBron. Well, yeah. I, well, it, it, there, it is if I'm saying I want to fucking be LeBron, but am I asking, <laughs> do I want something equal to or better than? That's a decent thing to ask for. You can ask for something equal to or better than. You yeah. can be anonymous. You, we'll put up a picture of the as, mask thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, you, these are your reference points. These are, it's okay <laughs> to just, just say, like, oh, I have no reference point. Because you don't. Right? You don't. You should train like you don't have a reference point. And then look at look around. They give yeah. you so many reference points. Well, I yeah. started with the, the unthink me thing to be, you know, in, by title, like uh, anti-identity. But I found that more and more the story kind of comes into play in terms of the themes that I was working with. And then I right. kind of went the opposite way. I'm like, fuck it. Let's get personal. You know? And the, the ultimate punchline is like, this is what we're watching. But it's granted from the start, you know, that I'm not really this person. I'm not, I don't really identify as, as the story of my life or the character that I'm playing particularly. What's become really evidently clear to me is that you get into, it's easy to be binary with your choices, right? Uh, it's like, oh, is this something I should present to a crowd or is this a whatever? And so that's easy for advice, right? Like if there's a person that asks me, hey, can I have some advice? And then you say, the, the advice is applicable to them but then what happens when you have two right answers right but they're kind of nuanced depends on the personality of the person depends on a lot of things whatever whatever yeah you story, know, then, story of my life over here you're like right, i can take exactly. a one sentence question and give it 48 answers right 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 and so there's a roundabout way that people go about answering that it's adding a nuance to the question answerer if you're knowingly getting your answer from a the person that only tells lies, right, then you get a different set of implication, right, or the person that only tells truth, right, you get something from the question asker if they have an adjective associated in their title already. Did you bang this guy's wife? <laughs> yeah, and if you, I what forgive if you, you. Guy, what if you ask the guilty guy if he banged his wife? <laughs> you know what I mean? You start getting into these predicaments where it's like, you know, it's like, what did your mom say when she found out you were gay? Like that, that you get into those oh, types of yep. things, right? Yeah, you yeah. The question answerer being very open and blatant about who's answering. Yeah, almost like like we could conjugate it into language. That was like a a thing I was suggesting too. Like uh, our language doesn't really indicate, you know, what sort of answer we want or, or what yeah, we're Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the thing is, nothing inherently built into the language we can do that. You can add an extra sentence and just add it. Fuck it, right? Like we're additive <laughs> like that with our language. Like we're pretty articulate and additive. So we're like, yep, this is good enough. But it's like, what are you pa passing back and forth? It's like the, um, this invisible abstract, you know, mechanism or identity that you're trying to say these two unlike things share is that is a metaphor that is a simile that is an analogy when you're talking to a a crowd that would consider themselves less intelligent and granted they know less jargon yeah. um uh, the, uh, the parables and analogies are the way you reach that type of audience right okay yeah so yeah, this would and, correspond with the sort of mythic mythic levels uh, as far as... Yeah, I mean, it makes yeah. sense. It's just kind of one of those chronological story type things. And then do you feel like the story, the story mind kind of drops out in the, in the higher states or the higher stages? Like, uh, do, we, no, do we disidentify no, with personal story? If I ask you, like, does L before, come before K? 
Like, mm-hmm. do, do you have to sing the alphabet in your head? Do you, do you have that in your RAM? Like, like it takes me a second. I mean? Yeah, it takes a second. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, or what about like you know maybe O and P are easier because you know N O P you know N O P really well, right? Yeah, you get that. You got a personality behind it. You got a whatever. You know, it's how is your memory allocated? If it's allocated in a really systematic grid, come on now. Are we going to call all structure story because it becomes pretty synonymous when we're dealing with abstract things? Yeah, and I mean, or maybe like uh, a, a higher state could be considered like the resolution of a story, but the story yep. still yeah, yeah, recognized yeah. And, and granted. If you watch the full movie, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to reference a movie that you only watched halfway through because you don't get your own punchline. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. that quote that you did, it's like, ha, huh, you didn't even know Luke was his father when you made that quote. That's funny, you know, and that's how real life is, isn't it funny? Like, that's all of my analogies that I use and stuff like that. These are all triple-double meaning. Like, I, it's funny, because, uh, uh, like I said, it, there becomes that pecking order of, like, oh, I can teach this from two valid viewpoints, or two valid viewpoints, two valid... And then you follow, and so your answer to that is, let me do the... the at least damage mitigate. Let me just choose one, like a, like overarching yes or no. And that is like a sort of uh, pedagogical I, tool. Like that's like a teaching yeah, I, thing. I guess. Yeah. What I'm. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like it, right. It's like if you have to tell your students to go the left-handed path or the right-handed path, and you know that they should ideally finish one story before you read the other story. <laughs> yeah. Two really big overarching stories here, and they cross a shit ton. And so you may as well just finish one story and then just view the the one story in a new, like, you know, poetic light after the fact, and then watch it a few times to get desensitized to it. And then you can start talking about it like you know it.